All right, people, I'm gonna do a old school Maddie video of um, playing with something. I, uh, I've made claims, but I haven't actually listened to one of these in the garage. Uh, this is the uh, Sennheiser Ambio subwoofer, or not subwoofer, um, they're coming out with a subwoofer. Um, uh, it's not center channel, sound bar. Gosh, I should be prepared for these darn videos. And I wanted to just do a fumble, unbox, set it up, run the Ambio um, software room calibration in, in the garage here and uh, and see how it goes in the garage. I have this in my family room and I am just blown away by this thing. I mean, this is, to me, a sound bar never works well as like a, I want an immersive home theater experience. So um, I've been touting all this, this thing and I had Manny come over who's another audiophile, audio guy here and uh, we we're listening at high volume, and I'm like, this, thing, this sounds terrible. So it, it's not, like, like this to me is like a low to medium volume, just immersive experience. Best sound bar I've ever heard in my life. It's probably one of the most expensive sound bars on the market too at 2,500 bucks. Uh, but I have it running in my, we call it the B team room, which is Michelle and you know the, the family room where we have the goofy fireplace that I never took out. And you know, the TV is on a mantle mount, so it comes down. This thing's super heavy. It makes it makes it difficult to use the mantle mount. But anyway, I am in love with this thing. And they just came out with a wireless subwoofer, which I have coming. Uh, and they also came out with a uh, the MBO. What's the other one called? This is the MBO Soundbar. There's some. There's another name for the other one. So they came out with one that's more practical. Uh, that's like I think it's like 1,500 bucks. So it's it's a thousand bucks less. I'll have more details on that when it comes out. But um, for for the garage, so, so certainly for the home, if you need a sound bar, you got a secondary room, or you have you're in an apartment or something where you just can't do a whole home theater setup, um, this gives you like 3D immersive Dolby Digital experience. It's freaking awesome. Uh, and then for the garage, for those of you who don't have a lot of room to run wires or don't want to cut drywall and you, and you have a TV or you just have a cabinet where you can put it on, I'm going to take this thing and stick it up top here, listen to it on the countertop, um, see what it's like and um, just kind of show you, show you what I think. So anyway, man, the M2 is distracting me. It's sitting right here. So M2 giveaway is going on right now. Um, I was playing with some of our tchotchkes. You know, the way that a giveaway works is I have to sell some stuff, and I have to sell some stuff that we don't normally sell. So if you buy an Ambio soundbar, it doesn't count. Uh, because I need to sell the Ambio soundbar to pay salaries and maybe make a few bucks at the end of the day. Um, but uh, go to obsessgarage.com. Um, we just started the giveaway. Uh, buy some stuff from, you'll see it on the, on the banner image. But uh, this freaking thing looks so good. It, uh, yeah. It's, it's well done. Hockingheim Silver is amazing. I'm gonna do a wash and talk here in the next couple of days, but we have, I think we sold out of the GT3 RS, but I'm in love with these things. Even just put on the wall, and, and then I made sure that Bryce got a proper size. I think these are eight and three quarters, uh, but we have all of our skate decks. These count, um, keychains. We have a lot of detailing packages too, so um, go check that out, buy some stuff, help me out. You want me to keep doing this stuff, doing all this crazy stuff like setting up a car that's very well done. Um, you know, our other giveaways have been super successful. I hope this one is too. So I need your help. So go buy some stuff. So back, that's my commercial for you today. I just thought of that while I was sitting here looking at this thing. So when you open an MBO, we already opened this for some photos. So it may not look exactly the way it did before. Kind of push this, but looks like the guys did a good job putting it back in here. Uh, but it comes with this um, this microphone. It's a pretty neat little microphone stand, uh, and so you're going to want to do this. You're going to want to run a room calibration in in the uh, in the garage or in the house or wherever you're at. Again, I, I think this this could work in, in both both locations. Could work in your garage. You don't want to do some speakers. Um, you want um, you're watching. You know, a lot of a lot of you watch YouTube. You'll watch um, you'll watch. You know, whatever, Amazon Prime, you'll watch Netflix, you'll watch sports out in the garage while you're detailing or working on something, fixing something. Uh, and so having some great sound, I'm telling you, changes the whole experience. So I think a sound bar is for those of you, like this isn't good enough for me. 
I'm a bit of a snob when it comes to audio, uh, but if I was gonna do a sound bar, this is the one. And I think that this is gonna do really, really well here, even in this big garage. What did we say this garage is? Like 1,300 square feet or something like that. So power cord, remote control. Um, you know, the remote, you'll get it out. I don't think you'll use it very much, uh, but uh, you generally you'll use the app. Or you know, when you set up, when you connect it to your display, uh, it'll connect via um, HDMI and ARC, the Enhanced Audio Return Channel, which is a lossless um, uh, audio connection to this. And so you, it'll take over for your TV's volume and it'll turn on every time your TV turns on because um, our, uh, the our audio return channel will, will tell the soundbar to turn on. And so this thing's, we're, we're gonna try to pull the cover off of this. I'll show you, this thing's loaded with speakers. And it, you know, it can hold its own without a subwoofer. You know, it's certainly, I haven't, I haven't actually listened to mine with a subwoofer yet. I'm kind of excited to test theirs out. Uh, and if theirs doesn't do as well as I'd like, then I'm gonna probably just add another subwoofer. I mean, the way my house is set up, those of you who've seen it, I've got room B and room A, and they're right back to back. And so in room A, I've got $100,000 worth of audio stuff. And room B, I've got a sound bar and a 77 inch OLED. So do I really need a subwoofer in there? But I'll watch that display. You know, Michelle and the kids don't give a crap, but I'll watch that display when I'm cooking something in the kitchen or cleaning, washing dishes or something like that. Or, um, just, you know, occasionally I'll, um, you know, I'll watch something in that room just because I'm too lazy to go in the next room. So this sucker weighs a freaking crap ton. So if you want specs, just go to obsessedgarage.com and read the specs or watch YouTube videos from nerds who don't know anything about this stuff. Um, I'm gonna give you my take, like what I think, not, not a spec sheet. I find those videos that spec, where they're just talking about specifications, they're freaking worthless. I want somebody who knows what they're doing, who has listened to a lot of stuff, just tell me what to do. So that's what I'm gonna do. I know what I'm doing. I never listened to tens of thousands of speakers. Yeah, that's a little aggressive. Thousands of speakers, at least hundreds of speakers, probably thousands of speakers in my, you know, many, many years of messing with this stuff. But this thing is, this thing, so keep in mind, this thing is a gosh darn tank. I mean, I think it probably weighs about 70 pounds. We can look up the specs, but it's freaking heavy as crap. Let's try not to drop it on the ground here, because I do, this, uh, this, this one here is going to Helen. So this will be used in the, um, I think I'm gonna use it, where am I gonna put it? In the, in the game room downstairs, it's connected to an A series. I'm gonna get a 77A OLED and uh, put that in the uh, game room so we can watch football and things while people are playing ping pong and messing around in the game room. All right. There's a little manual and stuff here. We, we don't need a manual. We're, we're, uh, we know what we're doing here. So it'll come in this box and then it'll come in another box. We stock these, we're stocking and shipping them. So I'm gonna first, let's first set it up on a countertop here, and listen to it, see how it goes there. And then maybe I'll put it up top there and we'll see how it does. God dang, I think it's no joke. Before we get into it, let's try to pull the cover off here. Oh yeah, cover comes off. I hadn't pulled mine off to see. This thing's got like a hundred speakers in it. hundred drivers, I should say. So the magic of this, I think, is a combination of quality drivers. The only thing I don't love is I believe it's an aluminum dome tweeter. I wish they would use soft dome. But you have some pretty solid feeling drivers. And then of course you have a, you know, a pretty sizable, pretty substantial cabinet. This is uh, aluminum on top here. And then you have the grills for the, the ported grills. I think there's a port behind here. Um, but this, 
the structure of the cabinet is, you know, it feels like it's a $2,500 thing. Like the weight, the size, the technology. You have one, two, three, four, five tweeters. One, two, three, four, five, six woofers. Um, they would you know, very likely be crossed over at different different levels, but I think these little these little three inch drivers. I mean, this thing plays down to something like 40 hertz. I mean, you could get away with not doing a subwoofer, um, but but again, any any speakers, even large tower speakers. I think you know, even these these uh, monster um, which have a nine inch woofer in them, these Core 59s still still can can utilize the subwoofer and do well with it. So connectivity, so if you're thinking about connecting this, obviously to your TV, you would just run an HDMI cable. They give you an HDMI cable that comes in the box. You might need something longer. Um, but the connectivity is down here <clears throat> on the back. So you have power, USB, Ethernet. So, you know, if you do have Ethernet, you know, connected, I mean, I don't see what advantage you'd gain from that. Here's your HDMI, your eARC. E stands for enhanced. So the enhanced audio return channel is the latest, is the newest version of audio return. The enhanced audio return channel will pass lossless uh, Adobe Digital Plus, uh, was it DTS, uh, DTS EX. Uh, it'll pass that um, and uh, pass it to, to, the, um, to the sound bar. And then you have uh, HDMI 2, HDMI 3. I'm not sure why you would need, I guess, for Blu-ray. Because what I would do, if, if you were connecting, let's say you had Apple TV, you had a Blu-ray player, and so whatever other source. I would run that. Now that we have enhanced audio return channel, the way to do it to help with, um, with syncing issues uh, is to run, uh, run all of your HDMI into your display. Into your, as long as you have a modern, like a newer, newer display, newer TV, then just run the single HDMI into this thing. So I wouldn't mess with one and two. It has optical in, uh, has a subwoofer pre-out, which is key, uh, and then has the... Um, has a, an auxiliary input if you had something else. So if you had this set up in the garage, I mean, you could you could um, connect like a, you could connect like a Blue Sound node to this if you really wanted to. So if you wanted to just set up high res audio because this is going to connect via Bluetooth, uh, it's not going to connect. Uh, I don't think. I'm pretty sure this will not connect through the Sennheiser app. We're going to play with that here in a minute. I don't think you can connect high-res audio to, to this thing. And, and I think this is worthy of, of high-res audio. It's going to kind of mess it up in that you're not going to get like traditional stereo because it's going to do its 3D sounding thing. Um, but I think that um, if you really wanted to improve your, your, your sound quality, you could put up and put a node or attach a node to this thing. You don't, you don't need an amplifier because this has it. So these feet come off. So these are rubberized feet. These feet would come out if you wanted to do the bracket. So you can see this is like a rubber, rubber foot, which gives you the ability to adjust the angle because we want it to be flat. But I think you can, uh, you can move these things around and pick, pick different angles. There's a little rubber, little, I'd probably cut this thing off, um, but this would be nice to run your, run your TV through, through, or TV wires if you're running it up to the display. Uh, and then you have set up. Let me grab the bracket for you, I'll show you that, and then we'll start listening to this thing. So if you were gonna do a mantle mount, like I did, mantle mount, still you still need this bracket so you have to buy this bracket um, if you're going to do the, the over the fireplace thing and i will tell you you i've got to muscle it so even with a mantle mount on a 77 inch oled and the whatever the biggest mantle mount they make this is the uh the one that is non-motorized i mean i've got to I've got to really lift it past the mantle and really muscle it like Michelle or the kids won't mess with it because it's too heavy. So if you are going to do a sound bar like this, it does work, but it's, it's a, you know, it's a heavy proposition, you know, so most of the time I leave the TV down. Uh, and because it, it's not as simple as well, you see people like the little old lady just kind of lifting the TV, which would be true if you didn't put this freaking 80 pound um, 
thing on, on it. So this is the bracket. If you're going to do any kind of wall mounting, um, you're going to want this bracket. And I would tell you, you know, in your garage, in your house, don't f just freaking cut the drywall. Watch us, watch all the videos of us cutting the drywall. Cut a hole in it. Go get one of those little orange brackets. You can get like a little, 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 uh, the little wire feed th feed through thingy, little brushed thing we could feed you if we wanted to put a wall plate on. Generally, it's going to be behind something, but. You know, you would cut, you would cut out a hole and fish the stuff through, and then you know use the bracket. So the feet come out, bracket goes in. It's uh, powder coated, pretty solid, uh, and has several you know mounting points. And if you had some weird spot with a, for with studs that you know, or was off center or something, you could just drill, drill the holes in this. I wouldn't be afraid to drill holes wherever you needed to put some lags, and you put some lags into your studs, or put some tap cons into uh, the block wall for those of us, for those of you that have block walls in your garage. So, let's hook it up and see what it sounds like. Gosh, this thing is solid, man. It's so different. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the Klipsch, you know, the Klipsch soundbar setup, but this is on a whole different level. This thing is no freaking joke. Let's put our put our cover back on so there shouldn't be any reason why you would need to take this off I wouldn't I wouldn't mess with it if you weren't making a video just leave the I guess it does come off and go on pretty easily seems like shouldn't be any issue with that I'd just be afraid of breaking a tab on your and they don't sell this thing to replace it so it'd probably be pretty hard to get So it's kind of nifty how the grill like has little indentations where the speakers are. I don't think I've ever really seen that. Like you run your hand across, you can't really see it unless you catch the right angle. I, in fact, I didn't even notice that when I, the one at my house, but there's little, little concave divots on the, on the speaker. Oh, let's plug it in. It's interesting that Despite this fact, this thing probably draws a decent amount of juice. It just has like a little typical cable box remote con or um, power cord. Be a grown up. If you do this right now, this is this is Maddie's tip. If you have a receiver, you have some sort of audio equipment, and you've left the sticker on, you're like you've left this sticker on it. This is mine, so I'm taking this off now. You know the one on the front that says like all the, you know, it's like the thing for display and you, you didn't realize it, go take that sticker off right now. Oh, dang it. Oh, luckily they put the proper kind of glue on here that comes right off. See how much better that looks? That's my tip of the day. That is a microcosm of your, what your brain looks like, like in your brain, how, you know, organized things are. It's a microcosm of everything in your life. Go take the sticker off of the front of your, of your audio equipment. It's a microcosm. It immediately tells me if you have it on there that you have no idea what you have or what you're doing. Maybe you don't care. It's probably better. It's a better life to not care about that kind of stuff, but yeah, it's called Smart Control. So you want the Sennheiser Smart Control app. I'm gonna add a device. Because you wanna go and do all of the, uh, you wanna do software updates. Looking for a device. Ambio soundbar. Boom. Remind me later. All right, Web Title Connect. I didn't realize that. All right, I stand corrected. All right, I can't play that stuff because we're going to get copyrighted. So Adobe Atmos, that's true. It's Adobe Digital Plus and Adobe Atmos uh, DTS-X. So most modern sound formats. And then in Title, I'm connected. So I'm using, so I've said this a million times, but uh, when you have Title Connect or Spotify Connect, 
you're simply using your phone as a remote control and the player is inside of the device. So no need for a blue sound node at all. I didn't even think about that. So in your garage, this, this would be much more important in your garage and your family room. Um, I don't really listen to music in my family room, you know, in my home theater. Uh, so I think that, uh, but in the garage, you'd be listen, you'll probably listen to music on something like this more than you would use it for, for TV. So I think that, that that's an important um, distinction. Okay, I guess I'm gonna have to connect to some, uh, we'll have to connect to some audio stuff. I'll have to put some stuff on my phone or something so I can listen to. Yeah. I got to pull that folder up so we can listen to stuff here in a minute. All right, but first let's get this software set up. So this is a modern piece of equipment. So you want to make sure you're going and doing firmware updates and all that stuff. So we'll go to settings and then we've already connected this to the network, but you would have to, uh, you know, you would want to connect it. It would ask you to connect to the network. Uh, let's check the system. Let's check our firmware. Check for update, no updates. So we have the current firmware version. So anytime, any piece of modern equipment you get, you wanna go update the firmware. Uh, so let's, um, let's run a, a quick uh, calibration for this room sitting on the countertop right here. Uh, and let's, uh, so let, let's do that and then we'll listen to some stuff. I'm really interested to see how this thing sounds. So all you need to do, this thing's super simple. Gonna take this puppy. And we're gonna plug it into the front here. There's a little spot right here in the front. It tells you something just plugged in. Gonna take this thing out here. And put it on the stool so it's at roughly head height. So in a garage, you know, I would pick lo a location, like a central location around the car somewhere. You've got, what, 25 feet of, of cable. So then I'm gonna grab my phone. You could do it from the remote. I'm gonna do it from my phone. It's just easier to see what's going on. So when you go to the audio tab, so the new software update, whenever the subwoofer comes, we'll be able to just connect the subwoofer. What does that say? To be able to manage the subwoofer, you need to connect your subwoofer to the soundbar using a cable. So it would sense that there was a cable. Hold it for four seconds. It tells you to hold, to press the button. Get out of the way and shut up. So now it's processing. So in the app, you'll be able to turn the Ambio calibration we just did on or off. You'll probably leave it on. And then you have different types of DSP stuff. So we'll put music on for now because we're going to listen to some music. Really simple, really well done app. You shouldn't really need to worry about standby on and off. So this is why I say, you know, the, the remote control is kind of pointless. I just put the remote control in the, cause you're gonna use your TV or your Apple TV remote or whatever remote you're using to change volume. Um, in your garage, I guess maybe you might use it, um, but I would, you're gonna just use your phone cause you're gonna connect to Tidal Connect or Spotify Connect anyway. So what I'm gonna do once it's done processing here, I'm gonna listen to some stuff because I wanna hear what this sounds like in a garage. And then I'll come back to you, we'll cut, I'll come back to you and then I'll listen to some stuff on camera, which is freaking stupid, but I get yelled at if I don't do that. And then um, I'll give you my assessment. All right, so I spent, I don't know, two or three hours just hanging out here in the garage listening. I put the thing up top here. I'm not playing music for you. It's a freaking waste of time. I sat in here. You're going to have to just take my word for it uh, because you listening on your iPhone speakers is pointless. So here's my take in the garage. 
so, and this is very similar to what I experienced when, um, you know, when Manny came over and I was jamming on this thing. So aluminum dome tweeter, not my preference, not my favorite. Um, the reason why I brought this in the store immediately was because I think that this needs to be the sound bar of Destination OG for anybody who has a secondary system. This is not a primary speaker. This is not something that if you're an audio guy, if you're even 50% of an audio guy, 50% uh, of the audio guy that I am, um, this is not your primary listening device. This is not your primary thing. This is your B team room, like we call it. This is maybe in your garage where you're just doing some passive listening. What this doesn't do well at is really high listening volumes. It gets kind of bright uh, even after the ambio calibration. Um, it's, it's, um, it's not something I really want to watch a movie loud, but I'm telling you at that low to mid volume, um, when I was over here listening, I was second guessing my choice because I was jamming on it at near max volume and without a subwoofer uh, and I'm thinking, you know, this thing is kind of bright. But then I turned it down and um, I was sort of assessing my thoughts. I got sidetracked on some emails and I had music playing for like two hours, just at a you know, moderate to low volume. And it's darn incredible what this thing produces. Uh, and so my advice to you, and I know this is counter to probably what Sennheiser would want me to tell you or what um, people expect uh, you to say, I mean, I sell this, I like this, I own this, I'm keeping this one, and this isn't for sale. This one is going in another room. Uh, I want these things all around my house, all over the place, on places where I'm not doing critical listening, but you know, to, to get rid of the crappy TV speakers uh, and to have a really great you know, Dolby Atmos experience on a sound bar that shouldn't sound as good as it does. Uh, I think this is a great candidate for the garage as well. Uh, if you're a background listener, you know, if you want to really, I mean, in comparison to like a separate amplifier and a pair of bookshelf speakers like the PSBs or something like that, it's not nearly as, it's not going to give you nearly the amplitude or output. But in comparison to a set of Bluetooth speakers or something like that, even like the great PSB AM5s, no question, I would, I would, you know, I would do something like this over that, especially if you have a TV, you know, if you have a TV set up in your garage. I wouldn't buy this as just your audio source. I would only buy this if you had a TV in your garage, TV in your secondary room, TV in your kid's room or something like that that you occasionally watch. Um, I do think this would be a couple of levels above what you would spend if you had like a, a kid's game room or something like that. Um, but I'm really interested to see, um, I've been running this in my family room without a subwoofer. I'm really interested to see how the Sennheiser, Sennheiser subwoofer does because it is lacking a little bit in the bottom end. If, you, if we improve the bottom end a little bit, I think it will also take away a little of the brightness of it as well. Um, I'll, I'll find the need to turn it up less. But for casual music listening, I think most of you that aren't like super audiophiles like will really enjoy. I'm just giving you sort of my take on this, but if you're not super, you know, if you're not used to super high-end audio, this thing is going to blow you away. Um, but I want to be realistic about what we're getting here in comparison to like, if you were to compare it to the, what is this, $20,000 system I have here, it's, you know, 10 times the price of this uh, with the, with the, the Dirac calibrated C658 and all the other stuff I have in here, no, no, con no contest. But if I had a, if I was just coming in here and I had like a 65 inch LCD TV, I connected it to it and then I could do Tidal Connect and I could do Spotify Connect, it's killer, absolutely killer. And for your secondary room in your house, just, it's unexplainable how good it is for that, for that purpose. So another thing to note, um, this will not accept through Tidal Connect. It will not, does not have an MQA uh, decoder. Uh, or encoder, I guess it would be. Uh, and so you're gonna play high-res hi-fi, uh, which is you know closer to CD quality. Uh, so you're gonna be playing that off a of title, not, not, uh, not MQA. So in conclusion, Sennheiser Ambio. Uh, this is the $2,500 version. They're gonna be coming out with a lower end version. Uh, you want this, I think, in your garage if you're a casual listener and you want some really great audio. 
the best, well, this performs best is at low to mid volumes. Now when I say mid volume, I'm talking about near uncomfortable, super high volumes. I would want to do something else. If you like to really jam out and listen to music a lot, this is really great for a TV setup. You know, you're going to put a TV in the garage, you're going to put a TV in the, in the secondary room. Uh, that's where this thing comes in. I'm excited for a less expensive version, a little lighter weight version to come out as well to complement this with a lot of the same software, a lot of the same capability. Uh, so stay tuned for a video on that. Uh, and then I'm pretty sure the subwoofer options that they have, you can run two of them at the same time. So we could do a, like a flanking subwoofer setup. And I don't think we need to run any wires. I think it will communicate wirelessly through the smart control app so I'll be sure to update you on that so those will be coming and they will bolt on to this this center channel or this uh, sound bar as well so Sennheiser Ambios up in the store um, appreciate if you buy this stuff for me I know you can buy it anywhere uh, but this sucker is is really cool and um, I hope my take on it gives you a little bit more um, input on whether it makes sense for you or not this doesn't make sense for everybody um, but it does make sense for a large section of people that um, have a garage with a TV or you have a, a secondary room with a TV uh, and you don't want to do a full home theater setup so thanks for watching thanks for your support see you on the next one